I'm going to show you how to unlock a whole new world of animation possibilities using one of iMovie's more professional yet hard to find features. Let's just jump right in. Here we are in iMovie. This is iMovie version 10.3.8 running on macOS Ventura 13.4.1 for your reference. And I have a project open with this on-camera clip on the main timeline. Over here in the media browser, I have a custom lower third graphic with a transparent background that I created in Apple Keynote. I'm going to add this graphic to my project by first going down to the timeline and placing the playhead at around the one second mark. That's when I want the lower third to appear on screen. I'll click on the lower third graphic in the browser to select it, then hit the Q key on my keyboard to add the lower third graphic to the timeline as a connected or overlay clip, starting at the position of the playhead. I'm going to drag out the lower third clip until it's about five seconds long. Now you can see by default, the lower third graphic has the Ken Burns zoom on it. To get rid of that, I'll first make sure the lower third clip is selected. Then I'll go up to the toolbar above the viewer and select the Crop Settings button. And you can see beside Style that the Ken Burns button is turned on. I'll switch the Crop Style to Fit. And click on the blue check mark to lock in my change. And that zoom is gone. Now, making sure the lower third clip is still selected, I'll go up to the toolbar above the viewer and select the Video Overlay Settings menu. This graphic is on top of the main timeline, which makes it an overlay. And if we look to the left in the settings, we see that this graphic is set to cutaway mode, which means it's just going to sit on top of the main timeline full screen as is. I'll select the button that says cutaway. And from the settings menu, I'm going to select picture in picture. And my clip changes from full screen to this scaled down inset version. This clip is now in picture in picture mode. So I can position it where I want by just clicking and dragging on it in the viewer. I can also scale it up or down by clicking and dragging on these little blue corner handles. But more importantly, now that this graphic is in picture in picture mode, I can animate it using keyframes. To animate this graphic using keyframes, I'm first going to size the graphic and position it where I want in the frame. Now, by default, when you switch a clip into picture in picture mode, your clip automatically has this dissolve transition added to it. You can see this little transition style menu up here beside the overlay settings that says dissolve. I don't want that dissolve, so I'll go to the field beside the transition menu and enter zero and hit return. And now that dissolve is gone. Next, I'm going to place the playhead right on the first frame of the lower third clip in the timeline by hitting the up arrow key on the keyboard. The up arrow key moves the playhead to the previous edit point, while the down arrow key moves the playhead to the next edit point. I'll make sure the lower third picture in picture clip is selected. And you can see the video overlay settings interface closed. So I'll bring it back by just going back up and clicking on the Overlay Settings button again. With the playhead in place, I'm going to hold down the Shift key on my keyboard and then click and drag on the lower third clip in the viewer until it's just off the left side of the frame. Holding down the Shift key constrains or limits the drag path to a straight line. With the lower third graphic in its starting position, I'm going to add my first keyframe. To do that, I'm going to use iMovie's keyframe tool, which is a little set of buttons up here in the upper left corner of the viewer. Now, if the keyframe tool is not showing, just toggle on and off the video overlay settings button. Taking a closer look at the keyframe tool, you have this little diamond with a plus sign in the middle. This is the add keyframe button. I'll click it to add a keyframe. Now, nothing much happened in the interface except the diamond with the plus changed to a diamond with a little X on the corner. This symbol tells me that the playhead on the timeline is currently sitting on a keyframe. If I were to click on that symbol with the X, it will delete that keyframe. iMovie's keyframes are tricky to work with because you have no visual reference on the timeline of where a keyframe is like you do with other editing software. All you have to go on is this little symbol up here, which makes timing and animation challenging. That's why I like to use a little trick I picked up from one of my viewers. 
With the lower third picture in picture clip selected, I'm gonna make sure the playhead on the timeline is sitting on my first keyframe. Now, if for some reason your playhead comes off of a keyframe, you can easily navigate back to it by clicking on these arrows on either side of the keyframe button. These controls will take you to the next or previous keyframe on the clip. I'll click on the back arrow to position the playhead on my first keyframe. With the playhead now sitting on the keyframe, I'm gonna hit the M key on my keyboard. That places a marker on the active or selected clip at the position of the playhead, which is where my keyframe is located. So now I have a visual reference on the timeline of where my keyframes are. Now remember, this is just a visual reference of the keyframe position, not the keyframe itself. So when you delete a keyframe using the keyframe tool in the viewer, make sure to delete the corresponding marker on the timeline or you'll get confused. You can delete a marker by just dragging it off the clip. All right, I'm gonna go back to the playhead and drag it forward about a second. And looking at the keyframe tool, it changed back to the diamond with a plus, which means there's no keyframe at this point in the timeline. Now I'll go back and grab the lower third graphic in the viewer, and while holding down the shift key on my keyboard to keep the path straight, I'm gonna drag it back on screen to its final position. Now look at the keyframe tool. It changed to the diamond with an X, which means a keyframe was automatically added at the position of the playhead on the timeline. I'm gonna hit the M key again to place a marker on that keyframe. iMovie uses automatic keyframing, meaning whenever you make a change to the position and or scale at a different spot on the timeline, like I just did, iMovie will add a keyframe automatically. Let's play back to see what we've got so far. All right, our lower third animates on screen. I'm gonna leave it on screen for a few seconds, then animate it off the same way it came on. So I'll grab the playhead and drag it forward to around the five second mark. Then I'll go up and add another keyframe to hold the lower third clip in its current position for a few seconds. Again, I'll hit the M key to add a timeline marker to mark the keyframe I just added. Then I'll move the playhead to the last frame of the lower third clip in the timeline, again using the down arrow key shortcut, and then nudge the playhead to the left one frame by hitting the left arrow key just to make sure the playhead is sitting on the last frame of the clip. Then holding down the shift key, I'll drag the lower third off screen back to where it started. I'm gonna hit the M key again to place a marker on that keyframe. Let's play back. The lower third animates on, holds position for a few seconds, then animates off. All right, I wanna quickly show you a really powerful way to use keyframe animation in iMovie, and that's with video clips. So we're back with our demo project, and right after the lower third graphic exits, I'm gonna have a video clip drop in over my shoulder like you see on the news. So I'll position the playhead on the timeline where I want the video clip to drop in. Right about there is good. Then I'm gonna go up to the media browser and select this stock video clip. Then hit the Q key on my keyboard to add the video clip as a connected clip to the overlay track starting at the position of the playhead. And there's the clip. I'll select it, go up to the video overlay settings, and in the menu, switch the clip from cutaway to picture in picture. Then I'll size and position the clip over my shoulder. I'm also gonna go up to the overlay settings and give the clip a thin border by clicking this middle button right here. I'll click on the border color settings and change the border color to white. I'm also gonna check this box beside shadow to give the clip a drop shadow. On the clip on the timeline, I'm gonna drag the little blue handle on the clip all the way to the left to get rid of that default dissolve transition. That's another way to adjust the duration of the dissolve, in addition to the duration field up here. All right, I'm gonna position the playhead on the timeline on the first frame of the picture-in-picture -picture clip using the up arrow key shortcut. Then in the viewer, I'll click and drag the video clip up off screen while holding the shift key to keep the drag path straight. Now here's a gotcha to watch out for. If I drag this clip all the way off screen, 
and then release the mouse, I won't be able to select the picture-in-picture -picture clip again. It's lost to the ether of the interface. I'll hit Command Z or Command Z to undo my move. This time, I'm going to drag the clip off screen, but leave just the edge of the clip visible so I can grab it again if I need to. All right, with the clip in place, I'll add a keyframe by going over to the keyframe tool and clicking on the Add Keyframe button. I'll hit the M key to add a timeline marker for that keyframe. Then I'll drag the playhead forward about one second. Then go back over to the viewer and click and drag the video clip while holding down the Shift key to bring it back down on screen into position over my shoulder. I'll hit M to mark the automatically created keyframe on the timeline. I'll play back. That looks good. Next, I'm going to drag the playhead forward about three seconds. I'll add another keyframe. That keyframe will hold the clip in its current position for about three seconds. I'll hit the M key to add another marker. I'll drag the playhead forward another two seconds. Then I'm going to drag the video clip to the center of the viewer using the yellow guides to help me. Then while holding down the Option key this time, I'm going to drag on the corner points to scale the video clip so it covers the screen. Holding down the Option key scales from the center of the clip rather than from the top right corner, making it easier to position. I'll hit the M key on my keyboard to place another marker at the location of the automatically created keyframe. Let's play back. And we've used keyframes to create an animated video transition. Well, that gives you a pretty good idea of what's possible with keyframe animation in iMovie. Using what I showed you, you could create an entire promo video or an explainer animation. And if you're looking for more ways to add professional level animation to your video projects for free, have a look at this video on my channel.